You welcome back to the newspaper segment, and uh, my guest is the NDC uh, member, Dr. Michael Pesa White. We've been talking about the president uh, in France and some of the issues that have been raised. Now, the education minister says that this is the best time to study uh, in Ghana. That story is captured by the Times. And uh, Dr. Matthew Pukuprembe has described the era of President Akufado as the best time to study in Ghana. According to the minister, the introduction of the Free Senior High School policy had resulted in an increment in student enrollment by some 31%, as opposed to the, the, the sector where 100,000 students uh, fell out of school each year at the junior high school level. Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe indicated that for the first time in 10 years under President Nakufuado, we have said this and nobody has been able to dispute. Every child in every secondary school has been supplied with all the core textbooks that has never happened before. Uh, this is on Monday when he joined President Nakufuado at a meeting with members of the Ghanaian community in Paris as part of the latest official visit. Um, to that area. Uh, he also addressed issues of uh, the introduction of the double track school system. The minister indicated that 8,000 teachers were specifically employed. Uh, we did the timetables that we needed and the president ordered the finance minister to provide financial clearance and we did it. Uh, this includes 59,000 teachers we have employed between now and then. It is not very true what you hear when you listen to social media always. Sometimes your judgment uh, becomes clouded with the truth, he said. Now, uh, he goes on to talk about teacher training and all that. So that's the education minister uh, talking there about this free senior high school. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor White, uh, certainly the free senior high school is providing... Uh, persons who otherwise would have been unable to access uh, secondary education because of financial difficulty, the chance to, to, to go to school. That is what the education minister is saying. Yes. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying that um, free education is great. And it is one thing that I believe both parties in this country, the NDC and the MPP, agree on, that we need to give free education up to the senior high level. And of course, it is a policy started under the NDC in selected schools, and then the MPP had come and decided that they would spread it to every school. So that is fine. That is all well and good. Um, however, I think that the minister needs to be very clear. There is a difference between inputs, outputs, and outcome. What this country needs from free SHS is the outcome, which you can measure now. We'll have to measure later in life. In terms of the inputs, it is the students who are going in, the financial resources, the materials, and all kinds of stuff that go into the educational system now. Mm. And of course, there's a financial value to it. It appears to me that the conversation around this thing has focused, especially in the context of what he spoke about, has focused on the output, which is the numbers of people who are going to be coming out, the numbers of people who are going to come out. That is all great. So accessibility and is open. That is great. Well, not okay. accessibility. I mm. think that we, affordability is what they are trying okay, to... Okay, affordability. Affordability is, affordable is what they are... So exactly. It's okay. affordable so we can all go. But there are fundamental issues. Access. Accessibility. Uh, access is what's the NDC was trying to address. The NDC believes in free SHS. It is a core principle of social democrats. But we believe in it in its quality form and equitable so that you open up the assets. Look, we were not crazy to just go around and be building schools. We were not a brick and mortar party. But we believe that those schools were going to give access to a large number of young people who need education at the secondary school level badly. So if we didn't want them, we were building over 200 secondary schools. That tells you the seriousness that we attach to free SHS. Therefore, one would have expected that anybody who intends to do it on a massive scale within a short time would do the due diligence and find out how many numbers are coming out every year mm. and how many numbers do we need and how many spaces are available and do that. This idea that this is the best time to learn, we have all of a sudden gotten secondary schools operating in squalor conditions, operating under trees, operating in what you could classify as workshops. And we say 
free SHS has provided us with the best opportunity or the best time to learn. This idea that uh, materials have been supplied to the students, it's great if it is true. Mm. But what about the teachers? Okay, Dr. Pesawai, before we touch back on the education, I mean, sanitation is a huge challenge. I mean, open defecation is common all around. Yes, and there is always a temptation to think that it is um, indiscipline on the part of the individuals perpetuating the act. Whilst there may be some iota of credibility in that, I think a larger, there is a larger institutional and environmental question also that is, I mean, li linked to policy. Um, nature's calls do not require visas to arrive. Mm. I mean, when you are called by nature, you don't need visa. If you look at the age of some of the people who were interviewed in the, in the, in the documentary or the short video that was shown, mm. these are elderly people who I'm sure have um, great sense of decency and when provided with the best of amenities will not go and openly defecate. Mm. As it is now, it is clear that it is the absence of those particular uh, um, and and this is not limited to the the coastal areas. Actually, right. an ancient town like Dodoa mm. doesn't have decent and dignifying toilets. The same applies to Doyumu, Ayukuma, Kodiabe, Asuchuare, Osuwe, and almost all the villages that surround. I mean, some of these communities. Mm. Neither do they have good roads, nor do they have water. And so we need to ask ourselves, what are we doing wrong? Some of these things must be rightly taken care of by the assemblies. Okay. And when we say it must be taken care of by the assemblies, it does not necessarily mean that assembly has to be in direct construction or provision. All right. But how is the assembly able to persuade but first of all, to articulate the nature of the problem and persuade people with business interests so that they can see business opportunities in, in some of these areas and move in. In the world today, garbage is no longer waste. Garbage is a resource. Mm. In fact, in some countries, they are importing garbage because recycling has become a big business. That nothing, nothing actually goes waste anymore because everything can be turned around and turned into reusable resource mm. and so it is important that we begin to think along these lines and and this this is an issue that i believe that again requires that the government must pay attention to the essence of human dignity matters of poverty and matters of i mean things like places of decency mm. must be taken very seriously unless and until we do that all these people we have shown in the video, I'm sure if there are toilet facilities in the area, and they are supposed to pay just 10 pesos or 20 pesos, mm. they will go. But in some places that were, I mean, you find the facilities there, but they claim uh, it's not decent enough. Well, For that's the thing. Elmina, some of them said uh, when you, you enter the, the facility, you, you come out smelling. Of course, but right. so that's why I mentioned some communities and I said that there is no decent, I mean, public facilities there for mm. toilets. In most of those places, you are better off going to do it somewhere else than in that facility because it's a health hazard. The kind of stench that will be on your, your person after you visit the place and come out, and the fact that you're spending a few minutes in there, you inhale this thing into your system, in itself has an implication to your health and an implication to our health budget. Because when you fall sick and you go to the hospital, you become, uh, if you have, a, I mean, the health card, for instance, then you become... Uh, a cost on the on the health budget. We need to develop the linkages between all these things mm. because you can't be solving one and leave the other. You need to tackle sanitation water. When you tackle sanitation water, it will reduce your your health bed, uh, your, your 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 health bill. Sanitation water education. These are three great social programs that, if you tackle them well, you will be solving other problems. That otherwise, your bill is ballooning. So we need to go to, I mean, again, uh, the basis of human essence, mm. tackle poverty, tackle ignorance, tackle diseases, and you will see that people will be in a position to, take, to make informed choices on their own. We'll come back to wrap up on education, but let's take some comments. Aisha is back. Aisha, good morning once good again. Good morning once again, mm. right. There are just a couple of comments. Let's just go through it quickly, and then we can wrap up. This one is from Alassan Wawana in Wa, and he says, all these challenges facing contractors were caused by the previous NDC administration. The Mahama NDC government was spending extravagantly and failed to pay 
uh, these contractors. Uh, these contractors are NDC contractors. They were not paid since 2015. Why the, didn't they demonstrate then these uh, contracts that figures have been inflated to give kickbacks to the NDC government? Ilya Suharuna sent that one from Sakai. This one says, Bright, please ask the man how many graduates his government employed in their tenure in office. Uh, please, if you guys get the opportunity on such a platform, you shouldn't do such things uh, to yourselves. Uh, he says at least people get 700 Ghana CDs at the end of the month as NAPCO ben beneficiaries. I Cafe sent that one. Uh, this one says, this discussion is rich and very objective. Cheers to TV3. We need heads such as this one to chart our course of healthy thinking. Uh, Tony sends that one from Spintex. Uh, Bright, tell the NDC man to stop lying to Ghanaians. President Akufuado and his government are better than the NDC. This one says, good morning, Bright. Johnny and Aisha, we were thought about sanitation in our primary schools, but the issue is the parents are littering and the children are seeing them and they're also doing it. And so how do the children understand that it is wrong to litter? Leadership by example. Daniel from Ashongman thinks that one. This one says, it will take a very long time for us as Ghanaians to realize that humans are supposed to make sure the environs are kept clean, we should change our mindset. Abu Bakar sent that one to us, and he's talking about our sanitation campaign. So, Bright, those are some of the messages we received this morning. Okay, great for. Now, let's wrap up our conversation over the education issue. So, you were on access. Uh, you think that what is happening now is affordability, but uh, issue of access and quality is a challenge. Let's wrap up on yes, that. Yes, yes, thank you very much. I think that we must pay greater attention to um, access because it is not enough to push all the young people coming out of the GHS system into the secondary schools and create some kind of concentration camps in the secondary schools and think that people are going to school. What is the student's teacher ratio in these secondary schools? How many students per teacher in these secondary schools? And how much of um, learning environment do we really have in these schools? Mm. And do these schools have all the qualified teachers that they require in all subjects to be able to? We do know that we have teacher deficits uh, in, in several schools. So, yes, there is, I mean, it is good that we have what we have, but one would have thought that there will be greater attention to the quality of it and the quality resides in the learning environment the teaching material the care for teachers and so on and so forth the absence of all these things presently undermines the program and makes the program i mean sometimes when you see the pictures you think that these young people are actually being punished i mean have been sent to concentration camps where they are cooking under trees and sleeping on the open floor and all that kind of stuff it is not the best because these young people are those we expect to be the leaders of this country tomorrow and we must treat them with the utmost dignity and decency so that they will have the presence of mind to ensure that when it is their time, they will also take care of this country in the most um, honest manner. I'm grateful for your time uh, with me. Uh, the NPP representative uh, uh, failed to get to our studios. So grateful, Dr. Michael Pesawai, a member of the NDC. Uh, thank you so much for your time this morning.